Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. On this episode of General Hospital, Lucky looks for direction, Joss is left to clean up his mess, Carly receives assistance getting rid of her tail, Christina frantically tries to assist Alexis, and Jason and Sunny come up with a plan. Jason's office in the coffee warehouse is visited by Anna. She assures him that the kiss is permanent and won't happen somewhere else. Comprehensive, replies Jason. She then cautions him about joining the WSB and says Brennan is trying to recruit him. As she walks away, he stops her. Look after yourself, he advises. She'll keep an eye on him. When Joss arrives, Bobby's place is in disarray. As Lucky gets up from the floor, she learns he's the one causing all of the damage. She loses her mind over his disdain for Bobby. Joss questions his heartless behavior and asks why, given that Jason put his life in danger to save him, he isn't assisting Lulu. Fortune snarls that Jason squandered the journey. Joss is left to deal with the mess as he storms out. Joss glares slackjawed at Lucky at Bobby's. Natalia visits Potsilos to talk to Sunny about business. He flashes his dimples, but she wants to act professionally because she feels too at ease with him. He persuades her to acknowledge that she wants to know him further, but there are several difficulties associated with his intricate connections. Carly uses a small mirror to check her appearance before rapping on Brennan's metro court door. Elaine, Felicia's PI co-worker, uses her phone to snap pictures as she walks in. Carly thanks Brennan inside for rescuing Lucky and Jason. She wants to at least pay for his dinner because she owes him a lot. He tells her, smiling, that she owes him nothing. Since he has many transactional relationships, he doesn't want them to have any. Carly stares Brennan flirtatiously from his hotel room in Metro Court. Dex gets a call about the destruction, so he and another police officer head over to Bobby's. Joss tells the senior officer that she doesn't want to submit a report because it's a family matter. The police depart as she and Dex exchange looks. Lucky visits the warehouse and runs into Jason. To leave that place, he needs a passport. That implies, Jason realizes, that Lucky cannot be a suitable donor for Lulu. Jason ponders whether or not he should hold off on seeing Laura. The disappointment in her eyes is something Lucky doesn't want to see. Moreover, he struggles to say goodbye. Jason, speaking from personal experience, says his family will be destroyed. When Anna arrives at her office, Molly is already there. Molly requests that she revive the inquiry into John Kate's murder and apprehend Sonny Corinthos, the true murderer. She's out of her control, says Anna. Furthermore, Sonny has an alibi, and she lacks proof. She is reminded by Molly that Carly previously lied when testifying on behalf of Sonny, and Molly provides numerous examples of circumstantial evidence. Anna restates that the FBI is currently in charge of it. Molly storms out, wondering whether all of her talk of justice is just talk. Sunny informs Natalia at Potsilos that she has the final say over their future plans. Sunny answers a phone in his office before she gets a chance to respond. Christina stops by the restaurant after seeing Alexis in prison, striking up a conversation with Natalia. Natalia informs Christina that Allison is truly thriving while on tour before she departs. She is thanked by Christina for informing her. Her only want is for Ollie to be content. Natalia departs, and Sonny welcomes his daughter. Sonny is informed by Christina that they must free Alexis from prison. She is urged to move aside by Sonny. Diane recently informed him that in three weeks is Alexis's trial. A lot can occur during that period. Sonny yells that John Cates caused this as Christina places the blame on herself. She is not to blame. Christina concurs that John and Ava are to blame. Felicia eavesdrops at the Metro Court over the phone on a woman walking a dog in front of a closed door. Felicia calls Carly while she and Brennan sip champagne in his room. Elaine rattles the door handle from the hallway before she can respond. Carly is told to hide by Brennan while Felicia spies on her. He lets Elaine in and promptly clocks her in as a PI Felicia calls Carly on her phone and informs her that she is being followed. 
Carly tells Brennan she can't allow the P.I. see her once Brennan gets rid of Elaine. He requests a rain check for their evening while he is at her service. Felicia contacts Carly to let her know everything is okay as he diverts Elaine's attention in the corridor. They decide to get together at Bobby's. Lucky tells Jason why he hasn't been around and how his decisions are now failing Lulu at the warehouse. He is not deserving of being there. Jason gives him an envelope full of cash even if he doesn't think his family should go quickly. Lucky has to make the decision about what to do. Cash goes to Lucky. He will reimburse him eventually. Dex comes back to Bobby's to assist Joss with cleanup. She informs him this was done by her cousin Lucky. Although she treated him horribly, she understands that his actions were likely a response to something in Lulu. Molly walks in and takes a seat at the counter with Dex. They raise a toast to better times when Joss brings them iced teas. Felicia cautions Carly to stay away from Brennan outside of Bobby's, but her main challenge is understanding out why someone hired a PI to follow her. Jason gets called into Sonny's office. He is concerned that Christina won't be able to cope with Alexa's trial. He's going to have to shoulder the blame unless they find the gun that she got rid of. Jason states that all the police need to do is show up with the gun that Alexis threw. Christina stops by while Anna goes over John Kate's paperwork. She knows details about the evening Kate's was killed. In a chapel, Lucky bows down and begs God to save his sister. If not, he will require assistance to cope. He has harmed countless individuals and committed countless errors. All he wants is for it to end. Right now, he could need some direction. I'll take whatever you got, because I'm pretty desperate. Laura shows up. Mother and son need eyes. While keeping vigil in Lulu's hospital room, Carly assured her that assistance was on its way. Before long, Brennan was at the door informing her that the African crew had made a safe landing. Brennan said they were a great team after Carly thanked him. At the nurse's station came Lucky and Jason. Without delay, Lucky identified himself as Lulu's sibling. Portia grabbed Lucky right away so she could test his liver. Portia answered Lucky directly when he inquired about Lulu's condition. Her condition is deteriorating, and we're running out of time, Portia stated. After taking Lucky's blood, Portia explained that they wanted to see if his liver fit the requirements for a transplant and, if so, if he was a match for Lulu. Lucky was evaluated by Portia to make sure he was in good enough physical shape to donate a portion of his liver. Lucky surprised Jason near the elevators when the exams were over and he was amazed that he was truly home. The men discussed the difficulty they had, as well as their loved ones, in going back to Port Charles. Prefer other soap operas over General Hospital, B&B, &B, or Days? Come discuss with us on our SC boards! To engage in conversation and interact with fans, click this link right now. After exiting the elevator, Carly gave Lucky a quick hug. It's a fact that Sonny from General Hospital can only keep hiding the truth about what really transpired the night Kate's was killed for so long. If the Teflon Don wants to prevent Christina's mother from being found guilty of a crime he perpetrated, he will need to either go off the pot or you know what while Alexis is in jail and getting ready for her impending trial. Nonetheless, it appears like things are headed in the wrong direction in the episode that will premiere on Thursday, October 10th. Diane receives new directives from Sonny, but Carly may stand her ground. After all, his recent behavior implies that I'm going to go down right along with you, as she informs him in the video below. Something suggests that her favorite ex's alibi, which she gave, would soon be shown to be a lie. Jason might end up being this whole thing's wild card. He acknowledges, I should have killed Kate's when I had the chance, but it's unclear if this means he's going to take matters into his own hands. It wouldn't be the first time, after all, but he acted rashly to keep Sonny and Carly safe. Regarding Alexis, a visit from Martin offers Heather's roommate some optimism. Laura and Lucky's reunion in another scene looks to be quite special. Can she persuade her son to stay in Port Charles now that she is aware of his return? Or will remorse over his failure to save Lulu's life, damn parasitic liver infection, make him flee the nation and the town? Sidwell told Anna, Jason, Lucky, and Holly the new regulations to the game. Jason and Anna would both survive if Jason prevailed in a card game. 
Holly and Lucky would be able to survive if Lucky prevailed. They would all perish if Sidwell prevailed. Holly spoke up swiftly, seeming to throw Jason, Anna, and Lucky under the bus while pleading for her own life. Sidwell was still enraged. Before securing Lucky and Jason's seats to the card table with handcuffs, Sidwell ordered his thugs to remove Anna and Holly. Sidwell took a seat to play but was soon called away, so Jason and Lucky were left on their own. Lucky was informed by Jason that his purpose for being there was to bring Lucky home. Jason eventually broke the terrible news to Lucky that Lulu needed a liver transplant and that he might be her only chance, despite Lucky's insistence that he could take care of himself. Before Lucky could process any of this, Sidwell came back for a decisive card game. Jason gave up fast, allowing Lucky to win. Sidwell marveled at how Holly always managed to land on her feet as he ordered the guards to remove Jason. Admire BNB, Days, General Hospital, or other soap operas. Participate in the discussion on our SC boards. To interact with fans and start a conversation right now, click this link. When Holly and Anna were alone in a cell, Anna questioned why Holly had not attempted to assist Lucky earlier. Holly clarified that she was unaware that he needed to give Lulu a portion of his liver. Holly was enraged because Anna and Jason had disrupted all her plans to gain millions from Sidwell. Anna urged Holly to have Robert tell Robin how much Anna loved her since she was certain that Holly would live and Anna would die. After their marriage, Holly remarked to Anna that it had been the sweetest time in my life. Anna observed that Robert was satisfied with Holly. But if you pass away here, Robert will never be content again. I just can't think out a way to prevent it, Holly said. At that moment, the guards showed there and dragged Holly outside while throwing Jason in the jail. Jason expressed his regret to Anna for the game's loss. I knew you would, unknowing Anna remarked. Anna quickly lost it and started to wonder if they would survive. Jason tried soothing Anna, but then he threw caution to the wind and planted a kiss on her. Sidwell was back in the poker room, threatening Holly and ready for another round. As Lucky hurried to free Sidwell from his handcuffs, Holly finally gave him a slap across the cheek. Holly reached for Sidwell's revolver, but as soon as Lucky removed his handcuffs, Sidwell smacked it out of her hands. Stella ran into a thoughtful Tracy in the park. Tracy sat there looking glum while Stella babbled on about the weather. Tracy was unhappy that Stella had come for their appointment on time, which Tracy considered late. Stella became irritated as she saw Tracy wasn't genuinely upset about being late. At last, Tracy acknowledged that she was displeased with two employees at Quartermain because they were insubordinate and ill-mannered. Stella concurred that employees shouldn't act in such a way while on the job after Tracy revealed that Sasha had hosted a brunch for Cody's family. But Tracy had to acknowledge that Sasha and Cody had taken the day off to attend the brunch. Stella realized right away that Tracy's true issue stemmed from her feelings for Cody. Tracy promptly disclaimed to be in love with Cody. Stella expressed her opinion that Tracy shouldn't feel that way, but she could understand if she did. That Cody's a tall drink of water, Stella said in jest. Stella realized that Tracy considered Cody a close friend and that Sasha and Mac were not the people she wanted to replace her. Tracy had lost two pals that year, Finn and Gregory, Stella pointed out. Stella didn't want to lose another friend because she knew Tracy was going through a difficult moment. At last, Tracy acknowledged that Cody made her think of Luke. Stella and Tracy carried on their conversation, discussing loves, families, and former friends. In the end, Tracy expressed her regret for her behavior and expressed her hope that Stella would be open to another meeting. Are you still not able to identify it? Stella smiled and remarked, a good friend when they're sitting right next to you. As James arrived at the Quartermain stables for his riding lesson, Sasha and Cody were having a private moment. In order to allow James and Cody to spend quality time together, Sasha made herself unavailable. Cody was asked about his relationship with Sasha by James. James was told by Cody that Sasha was someone who had faith in him even when he had no faith in himself. Later, just as Tracy entered the stables and gave them a sharp look, Cody and Sasha began having sex on the table. Drew quarreled with Ned on Valentine standing in the Quartermain solarium. Similar to Michael, Drew made fun of Ned for choosing to work with Valentine. We've all made mistakes, Drew, including you, Ned replied. 
Drew insisted a new CEO was necessary for ELQ. Drew wanted Michael to take over, but Ned felt he should be the one. Ned brought up the fact that Drew had only taken on the Quartermain surname in order to run for office as they continued to quarrel. Ned also brought up Drew's legal issues with the SEC. Before things became too heated, Willow and Michael entered. Drew indicated that he had nominated Michael as the next CEO of ELQ. Willow went to the boathouse in order for Michael to get together with Ned and Drew. Drew pretended to be leaving as well, asking Ned and Michael to work things out. Ned told Michael that while he trusted Michael, he didn't trust Drew once Drew left. I acknowledge that Drew is a quintessential Quartermain, he is self-centered and will take what he wants even though you have good intentions, Michael, that doesn't guarantee Drew does too. I can never trust him completely. Ned remarked, you wouldn't either, if you were intelligent. Later, when Ned and James had some time to ourselves, James asked him if he ever gave anyone kisses. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.